and welcome YouTube. Before we get started, please go drop a like underneath this video and it will just fill our hearts with warmth and joy and we will really appreciate it. Oh, there's the warmth right there. Wow. One like equals one flame. Burn it so all. Sweet. Don't we're like Charizard. Don't let our flame go out. You know? Don't they die? Dead. Yeah, they die if that happens. <laughs> so dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a dark, dark. Uh, there's a lot of really, you know what? At some point, we should sit down and read some Pokemon lore because there's some messed up Pokemon. <laughs> like, really messed up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm it's a kid's oh, game. But kids game with dark dark secrets okay so in in today's episode we did get some fallout news news this week whenever there is fallout news you can expect us for the most part to cover it we are fallout people um yeah. no matter how hard we try to escape no just kidding we'll always be fallout but i don't people. like fallout boy that much i'll be real with you that's, that's very interesting you would think right oh. i it always cracks me up when fallout boy comes up in the fallout tag because i'll be like there's no spaces in tags, so you can't avoid yeah, it. You know? Wait, I'm trying to think. Green Day, Green Day, I think is the one that I like. Fallout Boy, Fallout Boy is not it. I agree with you. I like Green Day. Yeah. I was a child in the early 2000s. So and, and to be fair. clear, it's take it or leave it with me. It's not. I don't. I don't mind them nearly as much as I just do not like the Beatles. So never gonna <laughs> let this one go. It's crazy. I don't know. It's just it's wild. What a hot take to not like the Beatles. So we mm. do have some Fallout news. We're just going to talk Fallout today. So yeah. um, I will be including the uh, images of what we're talking about for the video portion of this podcast. But if you're listening in, please go check out our Twitter, our Instagram, everywhere. I will be posting these images there as well. And so you know what we're talking about. But we'll also give you a little description of what the images are. So do yeah, you have a preference on image you want to start with? Uh, let's, I mean, let's see it. Um, also, we will be talking about Fallout 2D20. So make sure you stick around for after, after the news uh, because, yeah, we get our first session started this week. That's so. also news, though. So in my opinion, it is. It's very, yeah. it's very good news. Um, let's go with, well, I, I want to save. The interesting one with the yeah. two people for last. So okay. let's start off with the the Computron image here and the and the books. Okay, yeah. So the image is of what to me looks like a computer that would probably run MS DOS, something like that from that era. Um, potentially <gasps> even just a real computer. Wait a second! I knew something was off. The soda's flat. You forgot to pop the top. Oh yeah. Mm. last week you dropped a bottle cap and it was popping the top we'll pop the top right now all right all right you here you want me to drop another bottle cap <laughs> i don't know you if get, it picked it up I, I, I got a bottle cap for you let's pop the top cool That's pretty good i like it i like that we're doing a real physical popping of the top every week yeah, don't <laughs> don't ask me to not do that anymore because it's in my heart and desire okay right, i like this on brand <laughs> it was it was dos i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i had to bring that up my glasses uh yeah the, the computer is very it looks like a just a computer that would exist and it's the uh, keyboard is yellowed which makes me think it is a legitimate just old computer <laughs> you see the vault tech rulers i want yes <laughs> Okay, I need to open this and zoom in. Zoom and enhance feature here. Yeah, that's a nice little detail. It seems like they have some, <coughs> I don't know, thesauruses or dictionaries or something like that underneath it. It honestly, it looks like what public school in California looks like to this well, day. <laughs> do you see the reflections? In the reflection, it looks like there's either that's the lights or... I see lights. Well, like they're all over the place though, those lines. Yeah. So interesting. But yeah, no, uh, you can see the desk on the top right. It's like rows of desks as well. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, yeah that's but, interesting. It's 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 hard. There is a little bit of blur to it, but this is probably one of the clearest set photos I think we've gotten <laughs> since everything. We've I mean we've dissected some blurry <laughs> set photos. I gotta so, know who's taking these pictures. You know, someone like, on Reddit. I think that's important to mention too. So these are all from Hunter World V two on Twitter, who is a moderator in the Fallout TV show subreddit, which I think is just Fall or F T V show or something like that. But Someone in there is working on that set and is leaking. I think it's all coming from them, too, which is crazy. <laughs> he's just like, check it out. Check it out. He's just he's in there like this. COVID masked up, so no one knows. Bah. Take a picture. Mm-mm. Move on. <laughs> There's been a few where the, they were taking the photo like this, if you know what I mean. There's been some thumbs in photos. Yeah. It's like, bro. Yeah. So, uh, honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. Eh. I'm not super interested in this one. That the the rulers is a kind of a cool little detail. You can definitely tell it's in a vault. It's got like the metal in front of it that looks very vault bolts, things like that. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, it's not the biggest bit of news. See, I don't know. I want uh I want uh, let's let's formulate one rogue theory that's gonna happen in this classroom. R- just mm-hmm. random. I think someone's Goat. getting hit with a ruler. I think this is where the goat test is taken. Ooh, okay, okay. I like that. I like that. I'm a, I, I'm gonna agree with you. That sounds like a good one. It's it, it's giving computer lab vibes. Mm-hmm. I was like, I feel like if there's any place that would be like, all right, let's check your scores. Uh, this is what you got. This is your job. I feel like it'd be right here. What are they measuring in the vault? That's what I want to know. Phallic army rise up. Uh, next. <laughs> now it's phallic army. Okay, so I'm gonna skip over the uh, the one of the guys. We're saving that one for last. Do you want to look at the vault door? We've seen this one before. Oh yeah. There's some that. green screens in the backdrop. It looks like the sanitizer potentially, and the thing that extends out in Fallout Four, like the catwalk. The, that the breach. Out. Yeah. So. That's what I see in this one. I'm a, I'm assuming that's too. Yeah, this is this, yeah, this is a full blown green green screen set because uh, it's, mm-hmm. it's super bare bones everywhere else. Yeah, it is, and <coughs> it looks like the catwalk itself might be on wheels. So maybe we'll see a practical effect of it roll like expanding like it does in Fallout Four to like so you can walk on it, which mm-hmm. which is cool. I'm all for practical effects. Um. I'm not noticing much else. Uh, there are in all of these images, or in a couple of them, a green screen that you can see, like hanging out in the background, stuff like that. So, Chilling. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Anything else for this one? I got nothing else for this one. Okay. Uh, I one. rate this one a one out of ten. It's not there, a good one. We've bam, seen bam. better. We've seen better vault doors and other leaks. Just throw yeah. that out there. The next one, another green screen. I, but I feel also- like this is the same green screen. It might be at a different angle. Or yeah, I, yeah. I feel like it's just closer. I feel like this is taken more behind where everything mm-hmm. is. Yeah. We see something that says government, and, and it then said red, reds. Reds. That's all I can read, and I don't know what else it says. <laughs> reds. <laughs> There's something metal. There's a lot of like. I honestly think they are getting, which is kind of cool. Some like '60s old school like um, tech. Yeah, as like background equipment, which I think is kind of a neat. That'll probably make it make feel more real, although not as stylized. Yes, man, I'm trying to. I'm really curious what what the rest of this (laughs) says. Reds. What words have reds in the middle of it? Well, this you know what this really looks like. It looks more like anything. Uh, This kind of looks like. Almost like a saloon sign. Really? Or, or yeah, almost like how the Good Spring sign looks. Yeah. So you know? it, it's see. At first, I was like, it's graffiti or something. Yeah. Well, well the government thing is definitely. Um, but then, like, because you can see it, like there was a moon behind whatever the government thing said, and then oh, I can. Yeah. I'm almost certain that whatever reds is Could is referring treads. to that. Treads, fe- Freds. 
like treads on us or something like that. It's interesting. I wish, yeah, I wish we got a little more imagery of like what is is, or is that beds? I think it's an R. (laughs) Yeah, it's not a lot to glean off of this one either. Besides the government, it's some graffiti, very Fallout esque, some spray paint. Trying to formulate some theories here. (laughs) Got nothing for you. All right, I think it's time we talk about we talk about weird one. one. Yeah, <laughs> there's so uh, for those listening in, there is two people in this image. One gentleman, one Caucasian gentleman here we have seen in other leaks before. He was in the like three second clip we got of like, I'm assuming screen testing. So we've seen this guy before in these leaks. And then next to him to his left is a ghoul who is like precariously holding a cigarette in his mouth. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. I don't know how to feel about this one. This looks very staged. It does not look like a scene, you know? Yeah, yeah. It looks like they're just chilling, hanging around. We get, we get a really good view of the pit boy. Yes. We, we get a oh really God, good I'm view so of the pit boy. I'm so excited about it. How are you it, feeling on that pit boy? Because I'm coming back. To, I'm like, it's, it looks good. I love it. It's I love so it. different. It's, it's different. But you know, different faults have different models, so I'll I'll allow. Yeah, it. I'm I'm the one okaying this. No, uh, but I love that it looks like it's real metal. Yeah, that is really cool. I love that. I love the look of the screen. I love like the physical dial. It looks le- friggin' legit. Like it looks so cool. I would. I don't know. I feel like that is actually looks like a much more comfortable version of the Pit Boy mm-hmm. than these giant 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 yeah you, yeah you grab you grab the fallout 4 one like, it's not the official one but still it's big yeah. all right they're huge i mean they don't <laughs> my little arm like no wonder like oh yeah you get shot in the arm it's not gonna hurt i'm gonna wear my my pit boy for the rest of this Oh God, I can't. I'm mean, getting little arm. Um, you got a little but, arm. I'm big yeah. guy. I'm real big. <laughs> this this episode we're just gonna call Nywall flexes. And Literally, Nywall um, Albert. Nywall Albert. Yeah. So it is very different than these Pip Boys. Although I will say, I think it is closest to the this Pip Boy. If you look at it, if I flip it upside down, it looks a lot like this one. I actually. I'm going to make a definitive statement. It is this one. You you think it is going to be the, what is it? One hundred percent. You can see specifically. You can see this dial. You can see. And, um, and for anyone listening, we're talking about the Fallout Four style yes, Pip Boy, but the Pip Boy um, three thousand Mark Four specifically. If you want to get nerdy about it, um, I think it's this one with a very minor change. And the minor change is <coughs> missing like. No, that's so, there too. The yeah, the knob, the knobby's there. Where's this? Is there? But where's the wait? Down. Where's the where's the rag counter at? It is right here. You can see it on there uh, as okay, well. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. That's there. The button is there. The the light button. This it's this is it. This is the exact pit boy that's going to be a show. I, I think. Yeah, I think the only thing board. that's missing is from underneath the light button. Uh, there's. It's missing that black, the black uh, knobby. This one? Yeah. It might be the angle we're at, but I agree. And you can even see like the curvature here on the like Mm -hmm. top portion of it. I'm going to like, I was not able to definitively say that before, but I do think it's this exact Pip Boy different paint job, which I have said in the past kind of in a wishy washy way. But now I'm like, it's fully this one, which I'm kind of excited about. I don't know. We'll be able to play a little bit better for the Fallout TV show. (coughs) So. I mean, yeah, this is we got traditional uh or Fallout 4 vault suits even more so. Mm-hmm. We got our Fallout 4 Nuka-Cola bottles. Huzzah, yep. huzzah. Um I think it I don't know. I these Nuka-Cola bottles look like ones that people sell on Etsy. Like straight up, this doesn't look like the one that Bethesda sold at all, the glass one Bethesda sold. Mm-hmm. It looks like an Etsy prop to me and i'm like really interested in if they made their own or if they Man, that, that, that. yeah that sucker is filled to the brim too 
Like, there's yeah. no, there's no, you open it's that, you spilling something. Yeah. <laughs> How about you drink, show us the nuke or dark. Do it. I dare you. Mm-hmm. Be brave. Um, and then, yeah, the goal looks like spawn. Just want to say that. And there's also, there's a they lot to be said about this. They ghoul. don't have a pit boy. No. The ghoul is really interesting, though, because in the like f- images of we saw of this other guy, the human, um, he looked like he was acting alongside a prop in like the literal three second video we saw of that guy. And this this ghoul looks like a prop to me, too, or like a dummy or a, a bad mask. See, I feel, I I feel like I feel like they're locking eyes pretty well, though. No. Yeah, I said that in my video on it. I was like, <laughs> why does it look like they're about to make sweet, sweet love? I feel like he's like, hey, I'll trade you for this new Coca-Cola if you get this so-and-so for me. I feel like this is obviously a vault that has been opened. Yeah, very much yeah. so. Well, this vault too is the one that we saw the NCR flag inside of. So I think it definitely had to have been open at some yeah. point. Um, what do you think of the ghoul mask? I kind of wanted to pick your brain. I it feel looks, like it's a mask. It looks like Spawn. Do you think it looks good? I think I think it looks good. I think it looks absolutely fine. Um, okay. I don't and, like it. Because, <laughs> I mean, if you look at the, the ghouls from... Five, uh, four. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's it's what it looks like. It's not like Fallout Three or New Vegas where they're just like ah, gone t- and oh. yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it, I I want to say like it's impossible to do that, but then Walking Dead hired like freakishly thin people that were able to make their faces look sunken look in. Super and stuff, gone. You know? Yeah. Because yeah. I know. Uh, I mean, because that's I guess that's kind of like the beauty of Fallout Four is like you have different size ghouls. Mm-hmm. Um, because what uh the guy who runs am I thinking the right the combat zone, the ghoul who who was in there who's like, hey, take Kate out of here. Mm-hmm. Bigger, bigger ghoul, chunky yeah, ghoul. Yeah, yeah. And then within the games they scale characters. Yeah, so minorly, it's like but yeah. Yeah, because I'm sitting there, I was like, yeah, so I don't know. I feel like not everyone could be super gaunt, right? So yeah, yeah I feel that's good. He, he doesn't have pupils, right? Or is he just looking really far in one direction? I don't know. They they almost look white, like like they're meant to be like that, so they can add something in post, maybe. Oh, okay. I'm hoping. This is my hope for this because I'm a little worried about this image. It's a little weird looking to me. Um, I do hope they do something in post to make them a lo- look a little more. I almost this sounds disgusting, but I almost want them to look kind of oozy. Pussy. <laughs> that's reference, yeah, that's reference <laughs> a lot of the games that ghouls are kind of like wet to the to the touch. You know, aren't they like, known to be stinky? Yeah. So I want my I want my guy here being stinky. I love that he's barely holding on to that cigarette. I don't know. It just looks very precarious in his mouth. That look, that almost looks photoshopped into this picture. Okay, a few people were telling me they were like, a few people but, were like, "That's AI. That's AI. <laughs> That's not real." And I was like, "It's definitely not AI." First of all, look at their fingers. If you want to know if something's AI, look at their hands. Look at the hands. You know? Yeah. But, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I would, I would, I would say because I mean, like, even the shadow is picking up on the cigarette too. So I say yeah. it's good. The Vault 33 lo- literally just looks like a flag that they like bought from like, I don't know, Redbubble. They slapped a design on there and then bought it and then weathered it. You know what I mean? Like, it looks good, but that's what it looks like to me. And then the only other thing I could see in this photo that I thought was really interesting was the We Will sign right behind the yeah. ghoul, his right shoulder, and then something that looks like it starts with an S. And I'm hoping it's We Will Survive. I, I it looks like we will be back soon. <laughs> like they're on a break. <laughs> like <laughs> Okay, so that was that was the other idea too that I've been like kind of thinking to myself cuz every time I see the the human in any of these leaks, it looks like they're making like a PSA video or yeah. something like that. Very like how to survive in the wasteland kind of energy. Like that's what it looks like to me and mm-hmm. the way they're so well lit here, obviously they're not in a scene, you know? Like I wonder if these guys are like some kind of like 
post like bomb dropping like duo or con men or like (laughs) comedians or something like i don't know i don't know how they would record and get video out in the wasteland i don't know if we've ever really seen that it's not as common but yeah i I mean this was like wow i was not expecting to get a leak and i was excited to see it i'm really excited about that pit boy though i gotta throw that out there (laughs) yeah I i wanted to see if i couldn't find like all vault tech posters or something that would say we would be back soon or something but i think that's pretty unique to it yeah it looks handwritten too yeah. like well written but um so this this dude with the beard we definitely have seen before i think it's interesting maybe ncr is making videos propaganda videos <laughs> like that was another <laughs> idea i had um I don't know. I'm I'm fascinated by it though. I think because... man, so I, I I don't know if you've gotten a sec to like look through like this rider strike thing and Yep, I made a whole oh, video about it. Yeah. So I don't know. I I mean they said they finished filming. Like yes. period. At this point I the have... writers have already been paid. Right. So I wrote, I, I have a whole video recorded. I was going to post it on the 4th, but then this leak came out and I was like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the leak first. But um, what I said in that was essentially like Amazon's going to have to decide what it posts and when because this writer's strike is per- is in theory going to take place for an extended period of time longer it, than the yeah. old writer's strike in 08. Yeah. What in so, two thousand? Oh yeah, I was about to say two thousand eight. Yeah, yeah, and oh, what's interesting too is a lot of the, the what the writer strike is about is like the lack of compensation in streaming services, and then AI is another thing that it's like tacked on to the yeah. discussion around it, which is really interesting. I think we didn't get a release date for the Fallout show yet, and I I think it was gonna be fall, and now I don't think we're gonna get it this year, honestly really yeah and i'm nervous about it maybe maybe I'm, they'll work out what do you think the odds are of us finally getting an official trailer at least what time I frame i you know what summer xbox summer fest or whatever is happening i bet mm-hmm. you're right around there because i don't know because the writer strike makes me nervous i know in june I mean, because ultimately, this is still, they're catering to an audience of, of gamers. So it's going to be the Xbox Summer Fest or whatever, and June 11th, and then it'll bleed into Bethesda's exclusive. They're getting their whole separate thing from right. Xbox Games Fest right. or whatever. And I think they're going to go over Starfield, but I feel like they're probably also going to touch up on some of their IPs. I mean, because they're going to, um, because June... ESO's uh, new DLC comes out, which I will be playing that. That looks super fun. Yeah. Um, because we get a new class. I'm super excited. Sorry, tangent. I like it. No, uh, <laughs> no, actually, you know what? Use this tangent. Tell us what you're doing for the month of May for your birthday. Oh yeah, we're doing we're doing the the mayhem, the Nywall streaming mayhem. Uh and the way I've been describing it is like, you know what happened what happens when a sun dies? It mm-hmm. burns real bright and then it burns out and yeah this is this is uh Nywall's, like i've been making videos consistently for like 12 months straight without a break so we're just ramping up everything i could possibly do to just burn out towards the end of the month so by doing that we are streaming every monday wednesday friday with even impromptu streams along the way so yep. yeah yeah and, and i streamed on friday night one yeah friday yeah. which uh more people are wanting us to stream together, together? again so. hmm? what oh that's flattering thank <laughs> you guys so yeah we could do some more dead island together or something yeah. who knows we'll, we'll figure it out so yeah make sure you check that out but um but yeah uh i'm super excited about eso uh because that that dlc looks fun okay. and then they're going to be talking about that they have to I, right oh, i don't know I'm ner- the writer strike is a big thing like I mean, well, is a, is the writer strike also going for game companies or just studios? So a lot in the gaming industry are saying that they stand with the the writer strike. I don't yeah. think. I think it might actually start impacting the gaming industry to some extent. But 
I mean, obviously the show is a whole different thing because that is yeah, yeah. television, you know, but. <clears throat> but I, I'm telling you, this they finished filming. Yeah, but you you still need writers in like editing and things like that. Like their writers are involved from start to finish. I'm like, I'm obviously. Is that writer. true? Yeah, writers are involved for a lot of the process. Because of- I mean, I thought yeah. I mean, because I I thought it was pretty pretty flat out clear. Because like writers can write so much stuff. Let's look at the Lord of the Rings movie for example. How much of that stuff actually made it into the movie? Right. It's like because I mean, when it comes down to it, you have a director who says, "This is what I want in it," and then they oversee they oversee even some of the editing, from what I understand. Yeah. yeah. But the the director's job is to take what the writers have given them and bring it mm-hmm. into his vision. Right. And I know, I know, they just a director will simply go, "Let's strike this scene. Let's do this like this," and ultimately the producers will send in someone. And then there's there's people who are not with the strike which is mm-hmm. get, take care of your people back your own people up what's yeah, wrong are they with not you? in the union or yeah you kind of have to strike when your union go agrees to go out and strike you know what i mean yeah. like there's no option <laughs> but then again there's some people out there who need to feed their families so True. that also makes sense um but i'm like but ultimately it was like, should pay you during a strike too i will throw that out there it's a lot less but they they're supposed to with with all the heavy lifting that's already been done the people who are working as writers who aren't doing the strike likely will, if there is any kind of advice or any kind of, you know, the Mm -hmm. editors need to talk to, it would be with them. But I think most of that decision comes down to the directors who are, who worked on those episodes. So my theory is that the biggest impact the writer strike is going to have is because there's going to be not like in the immediate future but like down as months go by there's going to be a drought in what they have to publish and i think they're going to start like slowing down their time (coughs) that's the biggest effect i think it'll have on the fallout tv show then there's the other element and because this isn't an established series yet i don't think there's that much concern about it but writers are threatening to spoil plot lines of television shows right now like succession they're like Mm -hmm pay us more and we're going to spoil the ending <laughs> which savage. i was like <laughs> that's pretty honestly, savage like, great strategy Ex- like i love it um but i'm yeah i like my first job was a union job so i'm like down with it but um i i don't see that necessarily happening with the fallout tv show just because it's not like a long awaited series that's in its finale or whatever you know but let's refer to another game that that got its own show this year right uh the last of us Mm-hmm. All that was filmed within a span already. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't have to make any more episodes as it was going on. Even I think even with House of the Dragon, all of that was done and then released. Yeah. So I'm like, I mean, even if they stretch it out, I mean, I, I don't think they even have to do that. If everything is made, everything gets edited, and then everything gets the okay from producers. And they're like, especially if they're on strike, they're going to be, I feel like they would be like, we need to get this con. We need to get something out there. We need to make some money. Yeah. I think I, I, I mean, like, see, the biggest thing for me with the fallout show is it's not an ongoing series and they haven't announced the date yet. So it could be easy for them to just push mm-hmm. it back. Whereas like, I don't know what else is on Amazon, like marvelous Mrs. Maisel or whatever other show is on. Well, there. cause another People show anticipating it, you know, like the, the boys season three also just got, fi- got done filming Mm -hmm. maybe a couple of weeks ago before the strike started kicking off as well yeah so i was like and the boys season three is supposed to air i think this year Mm -hmm. i think towards the end of this year as well which another amazon prime thing so i'm just like i don't know necessarily just how much that impacts already written shows however house of the dragon which as of right now has not is filming has not finished I think that will definitely see a significant yeah. delay, you know? And I, 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 my th- my feeling is Fallout is such an easy target because we don't have a date yet. You know, yeah. that's my like thing. And I'm this, is, about. this is what I'm saying about that whole summer's games fest is because one, they need something. And they're also going to, uh, I feel like if we get any kind of trailer for the Fallout TV show, it would happen at, happen at whatever Bethesda's thing is. 
Mm-hmm. That's my speculation on that. Like, we're also doing incredible things with the world of Fallout. In Fallout 76, they're going to go? talk about, you know, a couple of updates that are going to happen later on in the year and the beginning of, you know, 2024. And mm-hmm. they're like, and... uh we know how much we you love the wasteland so we've decided to expand the world and we'll be releasing the fallout tv show is ready blah 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 and then we'd get like some kind of trailer and then i think in a perfect world it would be like may 2024 you know like i think that might be i i am i don't know you know what i'm uh hold me to it uh i'm Mm -hmm. i'm putting all my eggs in the basket and going with they're they're still going to hit the 2023 release especially because of the writer strike i'm nervous okay they, they need to make I, money yeah <laughs> amazon it, needs to make this, money this leads me into another question i had for you and that is do you think starfield might get pushed back not because of the writer strike um but because of uh the freaking redfall release and yeah, yeah you don't have you to know, get into that whole thing right now. I just was curious uh, what you thought. Full transparency, everyone. Uh, me and Nikki both like the game, and uh, we're just not trying to put a target on our back because we like the game, you know. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, but no, I think because uh, even Phil Phil Spencer, whenever yeah. uh, he had his interview, that was like he, a couple days ago, right? Yeah, that was a couple days ago. Yeah. Which, <laughs> which. Yes, the the game uh, probably need to be cooked a, a little bit longer. Let's be honest. And even Phil Spencer was like, "Yeah, I, I don't know what happened there, dude." <laughs> he, mm-hmm. Yeah, pull up some pull up some of those quotes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to find. But um, like, I know he flat out basically was like, you know, no matter no matter what kind of games we okay, I have a quote. pump out, they're not. Like he's like, no matter what kind of games we pump out, no one's going to sell their uh, their PS5 or a Switch to get an Xbox. He said the Xbox has lost the like the digital rush of yeah. the console war, which most people's libraries are built on the PS5 or the Switch. And he's like, you know, it, it that's we can't win over those people to get them to sell their own stuff. All we can do is basically hope to make the xbox stand out on its own to make people right. want to do that but i know that focus was wasn't even necessarily on the xbox but on xbox game pass as a whole yeah yeah so pull, so pull up some of those I, quotes um <laughs> there was a few quotes so he there was something interesting they said we do mock reviews for every game that we launch and this is double digit, digits lower than we thought it would be for this game which Oh my god! Um, Which another thing about doing internal reviews? Super biased. Yeah, super biased. <laughs> it's probably not a good idea to do. But continue. Um. Okay. So it's interesting. They thought the game was going to be in the low sixties, like out of a hundred. Which man to to That's think? Uh, yeah, it's like, and to be <laughs> to be satisfied with a low sixty is not. That, even at that point, I don't know. That's that's so they not knew. good. Dude. I think on some level, they definitely knew something was going to go down. But um, yeah, they say they're committed to the game in the near term. Uh, like they're taking the near term feedback, which, <coughs> which is an interesting note. Which, and I hate to say it, um, it's it's the same concept with Fallout seventy six and even like No Man's Sky or whatever. It, it doesn't matter how much you do to turn a game back around. People will remember its launch and associate mm-hmm. it with its launch at all times. Unfortunately. Yeah, because pe- people still dog on Fallout 76, and it, it has been totally changed around for the better. And, yeah, people still remember yeah. the launch. Yeah. So they said, um, he said, we let a lot of people down this week with the launch of the game. We will continue to strive on, which is like a very defeated quote from mm-hmm. him, honestly. And I think I watched a YouTube video about this and I'm going to just take it at face value. Uh, it seems like this is one of the first times that he's kind of admitting defeat in such yeah. a, like a deep way. And I, yeah. I went through the comments on that video and a couple people were like, Dreamcast energy. This is what happened to Sega, and I'm like, I don't really see Microsoft. No, I, I, I think this. Sega did, I think this is the first but... time I've ever seen any kind of rep like full on take it on the chin, and you feel like, yeah, 
Uh, kind of a baller move i mean like i don't know like at least rep gonna, uh, not even a rep the freaking ceo excuse yeah. me my bad yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely took it on the chin which i never seen that happen yeah because oh, usually I, it's like oh I, I believe in our team they've made an excellent product blah 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 yeah they'll be give kind of a political answer that's like yeah. still backing their people up but i mean i don't think he was even necessarily like he didn't mention the team at all in like a negative light which i thought was nice because i think this fundamentally boils down to an issue on maybe on microsoft's end not giving enough resources to the studio that they want which is which is so crazy to think you know because there was this i know there was this hope uh whenever microsoft acquired bethesda it was like okay this will be the thing that gets their heads out of their butts and be like, hey, stop going after the bag. We've got the bag. Yeah. And and other people now the have, Yeah. They're but they are they're like uh a lot of people have said that maybe this game pass strategy has basically been like, oh, don't worry about making mistakes. Big Daddy Xbox has you covered. I'll mm-hmm. I'll cover any pitfalls, which I, I can totally understand uh being an absolute valid you know bit of criticism because it's like yeah if if you don't have the fear of failure then what what would kick you in the butt to want to acquire right. the utmost success i mean i also wouldn't you be kind of concerned of being like relegated to the sidelines <laughs> under such a massive company you know and yeah i, I don't know i just I know we Which, weren't going to talk about this. <laughs> uh, you know what? I I, I appreciate I appreciate talking about it. It's a, it's like okay. a decompression because yeah. Full full transparency, guys. Your boy Nywall was super bummed that that didn't launch as well as I ho- had hoped it would have. I I really do like the game. I've put in thirty hours of it on it already. You know. Yeah. So I was I was super exco- excited to like make skits for it. I really thought there was something there, and then you know when the when it was finally released and everyone has gotten their chance to play it. I, I, I misgaged what people would have thought about the game. Mm-hmm. 100%, you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, there's, I think there, this, especially Bethesda too. I think that's like another factor is like, people are so hyper hypercritical and hyper focused on every little thing that comes out mm-hmm. of the studio, just because of what happened with 76 and like, it almost Which, makes it like a, a the, positive feedback loop of negativity. What's so you know? what's so. what's so crazy about it? It's not even Bethesda Game Studios. No, no, it's not even it's, like that's the confusing part too. Is I think people really don't understand Bethesda Game Studios, Fallout, Skyrim, Starfield, Bethesda Softworks is the parent is, company above that. Yeah, you and know? then so Arcane, Bethesda Softworks. Bethesda, yeah, uh, what you have? I don't know. Do they own id software? I'm not sure. They it's, own it's Quake and Doom and yeah, yeah, and Wolfenstein, yeah. right? Wolfenstein is Bethesda Softworks. Yeah, I I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna there's so many. But yeah, there's they, but yeah, there's there's a huge list behind that. And you know, I've seen people go, oh, because the last time they tried multiplayer it worked out so well. Looking at U76, I'm like, this is not the same people. You guys gotta understand yeah. that. It's a different it's the same publisher it is a different studios um but yeah i don't know i don't know i don't want to like harp on it too much but i i it's funny because we were talking about this before we went live but my husband's been playing it and he's like yeah i like it you know and he's not online seeing all the reviews over mm-hmm. and over again so i think it is really easy to make your mind up before you do something um which i'm not going to tell you to buy it but if you have a game pass give it a shot you know <laughs> and like I, i'm not going to tell you to buy it and i'm not going to tell you not to buy it and ultimately uh if you have 70 dollars that you can spend on your own you're likely also a grown adult who can formulate their own opinions mm-hmm. if if you like the game for the love of god just enjoy the game yeah don't let anyone do on your parade period yeah and if you don't like the game don't go bully the guy who does like the game for liking it don't start listing off reasons why they shouldn't like it because ultimately they've already made up their mind on liking it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all good. 
that happened with 76 too and it was a really fascinating yeah. phenomenon to see like people leave the game specifically because they were getting hated on for liking the game mm -hmm. it's funny i don't know i guess opinions are like, like casseroles, casseroles. <laughs> i just said it <laughs> um yeah i don't know sorry it's such a tangent um <laughs> But the last quote I will read is, um, we have this vision and our production timeline don't get us to the completion of that vision. We do delay games. So I thought that was an interesting thing to end on. Does that answer the question if Starfield might get delayed again? I don't know. We'll see. Well, I think you know, and that's that's where I'm kind of like, why did, why did they need to delay in the first place? You know, what, what was it that was holding them from releasing it? Was it, was it just bugs or was it the vision has not been fully realized? I think it's, I mean, that's what he's kind of intimating here. I wonder if this interview is almost like a, a slick warming us up to the idea of it possibly getting delayed again. That's yeah. my, yeah. But you know, I know that people would be just upset if we got another delay, but honestly, like if you're going to flip out over a launch yeah. being bad wouldn't you prefer a delay i would i don't know and, but, uh, well i'll say this right now regardless of how many times it's delayed whatever there are people out there who will absolutely say that the game is trash yeah they've yeah. already made up their mind on that and i'm 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 not surprised by it by now um there is a excellent excellent uh youtube channel called Kroby cat and okay. they they make the most um, interesting like documentary style videos over games, and uh, I don't know after after we get done with this, uh, I would like to sit with you just to watch the Kroby Cat Cyberpunk video because mm. it is so so well done. Interesting. He goes, what he usually does is he goes over like all the marks like from the announcement of the game all the things that they're promising people playing it early at e3 all the excitement the early reviews coming in and then finally release and then he showcases all the bugs and all the gripes that the you know the world has with some of these games and it's just like and he compares and contrasts like what we were promised versus what we got that's interesting and it's 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 a very good way to it, i like to I like to call it smart consumerism is mm -hmm. what it is it's like just so you can get a second if if you're ever feeling big hype for a game and the rest of the world is joining in on that hype watch a Kroby cat video it'll bring you back into normal mode mm -hmm. <laughs> to to think of it critically that was so. another rough i mean obviously another really rough launch i don't know i i I had I a PS5, I mean, so I was able to enjoy it fine. <laughs> I, I played it on PC, and I think that was one of the ones that was having issues. I, mm. I had a couple visual glitches, but nothing else was wrong with it. And um, I had made a TikTok at the time that was kind of like everybody flipping out about the <coughs> game's bugs. And I was like, I'm a Bethesda fan, baby. I've seen it all, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, which th that is no excuse for us to get complacent because we still I deserve good games, you know? Um, um Still wasn't a bad game. Just had some visual bugs, you know. <laughs> uh, there were palm trees randomly floating around. That was all I had with that game as an issue. So, the the only game I flat out did not enjoy upon release, the like the last game that I can think of, I think was um, no, it wasn't. It wasn't Cyberpunk. Oh man, what's the last game that you did not enjoy upon release? Um, I really, I had a lot of issues, not that I didn't enjoy it, but I had a lot of issues with 76. Mine was unplayable at release. So mm -hmm. that made me not enjoy it as much, to be honest with you, because I couldn't play it, you know, like, which is funny because I was a tester and I was in the beta and it worked fine. And then it launched and it broke my game. Um, and I think that definitely was hard for me at release, but it, I didn't dislike it because I'd already played it and I knew it was good. I just couldn't literally could not play it because mm -hmm. there was a boss I couldn't beat and I couldn't progress. So I think 
I think the last game I, I was hyped up to play that I was bummed about, I think it was, um, it, it had to have been so long ago. I can't think of one. <laughs> I just have good, but then again, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't really get super bummed out a lot yeah. on games because I know what I like for the most part. I think there's been a few Sonic games where they're a little goofy and then I'm not a huge fan of, but other than that, yeah, no, nothing where I'm like, oh, I'm so mad. I was sad about Fallout 76 because all of my friends were playing and I was stuck and I like couldn't do anything in the game. So that's it. Yeah. You know Honestly, what? If, if I ever think of it, I, I will update. Okay. the cap cast you and let you everyone had mentioned know. not loving breath of the wild obviously that oh, wasn't no. like an at release thing yeah but it wasn't a, it wasn't because uh it was like abysmal and whatever it's just no. like uh i got it for the switch and i rarely play my switch and it just I think that's there was for switch owner <laughs> and it, it just all or nothing. it wasn't enough for me to sit down on my switch and play a lot of uh right. the, the newer pokemon game was enough for me to sit down and and just play through and and enjoy it and i still haven't beat it but i just i really like it you right. know i feel like the switch is definitely like if you're playing Switch games, you're like, that's like all you're doing. You're obsessed with it. You can't leave it alone. You pick it up when you're, you're in bed at 4 a.m. You're playing it. like, And then you're like, oh, my God, I don't want to even like touch the Switch for like another four or five months. You know, like I get really into games. And I'm like, <laughs> no. It's like, oh, God, don't do it. Okay. I also yeah. pretty much only play handheld on the Switch. I don't know about you. I prefer. I, I, I don't know. I'll play. I'll plug up my. Uh my screen whenever i can but i think most times whenever i was playing uh pokemon i was just sitting on my couch and just chilling with it in know, hand so my, yeah it, it's oh, something so nostalgic about playing an in-hand like, game it's right there <laughs> yeah. that's nice I like your joy cons um Thank okay you uh we're terrible at transitions in this podcast can you tell do you want to talk about fall your... duty 20 yeah oh yeah that's easy uh, actually some of our transitions have been pretty good hey we've had that's some real smooth good. ones all we've right had some crispy transitions crispy. is that a word smooth? no it's just natural i think the word natural no we have to be <laughs> we have to appeal to the children well, natural is what I go for. You go um, for it. <coughs> I'm actually going to grab the, the 2D20 set right now, so we have a visual. Okay. Here it is. The starter set, at least. Yeah, and your boy actually has the book <laughs> right here, ready to go. Because I had to use it because I am uh, also in Fallout 2 or Modifius's official Modifius, the people who made this bad boy, the the uh, Fallout 2D20 system. Uh, I am in a actual play live stream for them to welcome in their new uh, expansion, the Winter of Adam. So Yes. So this is the first time that we see winter in a Fallout setting. And Ooh. in a sense, yes, which is crazy to think like about, right? I was like, does Operation Anchorage count? I don't think it does because it's it's freaking Alaska and it's always snowing there. Uh, <laughs> That's also in the past. So That's also in the past, so it doesn't count. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is... Yeah. It says, the source book began, begins with a train job, a broad scope of adventure that emphasizes prioritizing objectives and ex exploration, gradually narrowing uh, to, to a growing conflict within the Commonwealth and the confrontation. Um, so yeah, this this uh, setting, it takes place in the Commonwealth. So near Diamond cool. City area. Um, so fam familiar factions will already be in place. Uh, the Institute is still there because they have added in this expansion three new origins, which is which are the 
Gen 3 synth, synth mm-hmm. the children of Adam uh, origin. So we do have, which we have one person playing a synth, one person playing a child of Adam, and the Protectron origin, which I will be playing as a Protectron named Stud, which we'll get into some of that in just a little bit. Um, the From what I understand, uh, our our overseer or our game master uh april she is she said that basically we will be having to unite the commonwealth in order to survive the heart one of the harshest winters ever dang yes Good luck. <laughs> i know i know i'm sitting there i was like ooh. i was like i feel like we first people we need to work with Minutemen. uh yeah. I hopefully <laughs> hopefully it's post Minutemen run of Fallout Four yeah, where, where everybody which who you I, don't want to work with is dead. Um, from, from what I know, I think this is this takes place in between the events of New Vegas and Fallout Four. Oh, interesting. Yes, yes. So I was like, it's very interesting because I know some people have also played like NCR like ex NCR Rangers have who have moved out east in the setting and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, there's a lot to do. And for anyone who's never played a tabletop role playing game and you like Fallout, I think this is probably one of the best ways to experience a unique story. If you can find yourself an overseer who can really cater a a new experience without Mm -hmm. totally ruining lore for you, I I think (laughs) I think this is it, Um, which is a reason why I'm super, super excited to be working with uh, Modifius and because I'm like these these people, they, they've worked with the source material. They know what's going on. And April is like, she's super fun. So I know it's going to be dope. Yeah. So, April's really sweet. Uh, who's the community manager at Modifius, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, if anyone, uh, just a heads up right now, if you're listening, watching, uh, go over to twitch.com or twitch.tv forward slash Modifius. Yeah. Go check that out um, because that happens every Monday at 6 p.m pst pst i think so yeah that's where you are right pst yeah mm-hmm. yeah okay so yeah that's right correct um but yeah i i will be playing as a protectron for this <laughs> I'm and excited. I, there's still some things i haven't completely solidified so i'd, I'd like to I'd like to get your help nikki yeah go for it so let me let me get my background information about uh my my character here okay his name is stud um stud adorable before the bombs fell stud was a supporting actor in america's first all robot television sitcom the galvanized girls the series was a hit and followed the lives of four beautiful robots dot an ibot alloy uh, a protectron goldie and all golden miss nanny with a strong Louisiana accent, and Mercy and a Soltron and the primary love interest of Stud. Stud was a handyman neighbor. Anytime something needed to be fixed or any any of the girls had a leaky pipe, uh, he would he'd be visiting the galvanized girl's house. Uh, he played the cliche eye candy character, which would often be followed by flirtatious cheers and oohs from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! The, no. Uh, for the internal lore, the show was created by Rob Co. in collaboration with General Atomics, an effort to widen their market by trying to appeal to a female audience. The show was essentially the sexuals. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, the show was essentially one long running commercial for with critical success. The series finale was set to air October 24th, 2077. This Rip. episode, yeah, <laughs> this show, <laughs> this episode was to show the galvanized girls all moving out to pursue their own adventures, each with their own spin-offs, which had already been announced with their own merchandising. With Mercy, uh, with Mercy moving in with Stud. Stud loves being an actor and excels at it, uh, provided he has the right personality set. Working with his castmates always made him happy, as well as meeting fans. But what made him most happy was to see how proud his primary user, Emma, was of him and the others after every filming. Emma Emma took care of each of the robots personally, made repairs, upgrades, ran diagnostics, you name it. Stud cared about Emma the most out of every human he worked with. 
However, Stud had been separated from his group when traveling to to the East Coast to go to the season finale premiere in New York City. A car a cargo limit had been reached on this plane, and Stud would have to travel separately on another. The bombs had dropped mid-flight, and the plane had crashed somewhere in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Ouch. Um, I I really like that, like Golden Girls, but with robots. Idea of that backstory. Heck yeah. Um, yeah. Oh my god. Now I'm, I feel I'm like write a fanfic about it, but don't write <laughs> don't the fanfic do that we recorded in. The- <laughs> it's it's out there, guys. It's out there. I know we've not posted it, but it's because we just don't know how. <laughs> I think we we've discussed it. We just don't know how to do it disgusting um <laughs> no sorry but it, it eventually um but eventually i i i really like the backstory he has i like the idea of a robot being a heartthrob and it's that's giving very much like futurama i don't know if you remember that <laughs> yeah. the robo sexuality episode. Uh-huh. um one of my favorites <laughs> um <laughs> I'm excited. Can we hear your voice, or is it? Are you? Are I you I it? still haven't fully decided okay. on how on how I'm going to talk as Stud. No um, voice mod, though, right? Yeah, no. Or maybe no voice mod. It it it'll all be coming from my voice. So I I was thinking. <clears throat> so hello, fans and friends. I am Stud. You may have recognized me from the hit show, The Galvanized Girls. It's okay. Line up in an orderly fashion, and I would be happy to take pictures with you. <laughs> I'm picturing him like, you, like signing, like boobs at like a NASCAR. You know, like mm. <laughs> that's how famous Stud is. Okay. You uh, know what? And I feel like his. I feel like his signature is just a line. <laughs> <laughs> don't apply at one point he applied too much pressure did some damage <sighs> uh, yeah so i really like it um i'm excited about it and you had mentioned pre before we press record on this bad boy that you are he's gonna have like a nor that voice or yeah. something similar like Until that that is his that, he- that is his stud voice and then like um if he needs to act his voice will change depending on what he's acting as so is he so if he's acting as law enforcement, I will be sounding like this. And if he's acting like stud the repair man, the handyman, well, girls, I just don't know what's going on. I think I'll have to take another look down below. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if they say we need you to act as a hitman, error, hitman personality, not found. Oh, that's Load interesting. In. <laughs> I wonder, I don't know, this is, this is my, like, I thought, like, is there a way that maybe Stud could be bumped into different personality traits if he takes too much damage or something like that? See, which I think that might be pretty fun to work with. Mm-hmm. It is That'd like, cool. <laughs> oh, I think that would be absolutely fun. I definitely should reach out to April and be like, hey, this is what I'm thinking as he takes more damage. I've also made him extremely tanky. Mm-hmm. Because you don't want to damage a product that is making you a lot of money. So they anything that improved his strength, speed, all got scrapped and got put into his pure just physique. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I know um, <laughs> he's a stud yeah. uh, and he he's probably one of the most charismatic pr- uh, protectrons that, that you'll ever meet. He has a nine in charisma. Ooh, I like it. I'm really excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is kind of a different character for you too, because like what you know we had done in the past, mm-hmm. you're super mutant. Like it's it's definitely a a different vibe. I'm excited for it. Although the charisma is on brand. Um, yeah, charisma so. it's on brand. We 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 kept that. Yeah, <laughs> but no I'm longer excited. as strong. Not nearly. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's um, it's gonna be a blasty blast. So what were you needed what what did you want thoughts on i'm or are so, you just so let's i mean just like how you already chipped in the idea of as he took damage different personalities mm-hmm. kick in i like that that's a pretty fun idea i yeah. can work with you know how you can like what is it called 
is it mazed? Is that what it is? What is it where you like can make them change? You know, mm, I can't think of the term, but it's a if you hit something a, a certain way, or you like in Assassin's Creed, they had the darts where you could oh, make yeah. the enemies attack other enemies, stuff like that. Like that's that was like <laughs> what my thought was around that. Like, um, I wonder yeah, if I can yeah, get hit in the combat combat inhibitor. Ooh. yes exactly so the combat inhibitor would make you attack other robots in game like maybe it would change your personality trait like yeah, i wonder if you have like other personalities maybe this is so much this is extreme but maybe it sounds like he was quite the stud as it were i wonder mm -hmm. what the network did with him for the right price could you bump him into that personality trait? You know what I mean? Assu Dude, you know what? As soon as he gets to low health, yeah. assume the position. <laughs> and that will be the only thing he says until he gets patched up. Assume oh my God. the position. I'm turning red. Um, St Stud slowly begins reaching for your pants. What? <laughs> what assume the position no <laughs> we yeah, need to we nightmare. need to fix stud <laughs> that would be funny yeah i'm really i'm excited to i'm excited for this character and to see more of him and i saw a little bit of your session zero and it looked really good april's oh, yeah. at modifius um i i'm <laughs> stud sounds hilarious of course he has high charisma though like I, I don't I at so I was like are you gonna be like a like a robot personality but no you you're a robot with a personality yeah so. robot with a personality I think he definitely has to have some kind of presidential uh, personality Ooh. for sure I, this is because like what other programs would need to be installed in a robot that's an actor for him to be able to do certain like so did, did he ever he, have other roles outside his of the tag show? his tag skills are barter speech and um and lock picking okay so i'm thinking i'm thinking charming spy is why he knows how to do lock picking uh speech because president personality and then a um and then for barter probably just uh the friendly the friendly milkman uh, mm -hmm. Protectron, and yeah, I think I think uh, they were exploring different roles for Stud before they finally landed on the Heartthrob. Yeah, I want those are those programs still in there, kind of thing. Yeah, um, so it's just, it's just like left cool. o leftover personality. Yeah, or has he done cameos on other shows while he was on? You know, to promote it, like <laughs> yeah, it's you like, know that like. 70s era of television like i haven't seen a lot of it but i've seen enough pop like pop culture media references kind of un to understand it like the love boat would have someone else from another sitcom on for one week oh yeah like that you know like the cross episodes yeah <laughs> that was god it was motion. god i caught it we're good i don't Jeez. know i'm I'm excited. This is a good character. This will be cool. I know. I was like, this is going to be fun. I'm super excited to play with everyone. And I I don't know how well this will factor in. Um, but because he is essentially a, the face for General Atomics mm -hmm. and uh, Robco, um, he's very, very anti-red. <laughs> he has the like um so i've i just is, like i like i've decided like in his deep programming if anything mildly sounds like communist activity mm -hmm. you just it's just gonna be like stud starts to glare at you or at least it looks right. like it but stud doesn't have eyes <laughs> Yeah, that's like part of robotics too, right? Is having that like I don't know. In I'm my I'm fully basing this off of iRobot. That's my knowledge of it. But where they have the one rule that they can't violate, you know, yeah. like um. Oh, Stud can absolutely uh, violate that in in order to protect Robco and his and its that would entities. Be the one rule, <laughs> yeah, right? that would be it. It's his like core. must. Yeah, the core rule is do not affiliate with common. Yeah. Or, or or you will jeopardize Robco's good stage and good standing. Period. Yeah, it's all about representing Robco in a good way. I love that. I'm excited. <laughs> That's cool. I don't know. Okay, my 
this is my other idea. Could could he randomly at any point in the stream drop some product placement for various Rob Co. products? <laughs> could he oh be my like God. Pip Boy? You know, like, that they make <laughs> just <it> like <laughs> like just in the middle of a very serious conversation. If we're if we're going to get uh, the Minutemen to work with these Raiders, we are going to have to. Brought to you by Rob Co. Yeah. <laughs> Pit Boy 3000. Never lose track of important stats again. Yeah. Cur you know, curious on if that this. fungus is gone? Check the Pit Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, like, um, oh my God, I can't. I like the name of the movie is facing on me right now. Oh, the Truman Show, where they're like yeah. randomly, like, wow, this beer is ultra filtered and really delicious, you know? And Truman's just like, what are you, you know? This, this, and you know what? Just for the added effect, you know, while I'm having the conversation, I think I will look directly into the camera. Mm -hmm. This episode was brought to you by Robco. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. It, it's perfect. Like he's still he thinks he's in like a guest performance right now. Yeah. Still, like, I love that. It's, it's like Dude, the I'm only so way he can function. Oh yeah, no. You, you know what? I think I think somewhere in the backstory I have to add that he he rolled with the in the pit for a little bit with um mm -hmm. I'm trying to think who it was who were the factions again? You had in the DLC? Yeah, in the DLC. Um, in I don't know about seventy six fully, but uh, for Fallout Three, it was Asher who was ex Brotherhood of Steel. Um, and then it was the other faction was just the people who were enslaved and the Pit know, Raiders. Stealing... Yeah. yeah, so Pit Raiders. You know what? Who I was think ran I'll... by Asher. Yeah, um, I, I think I will at some point. I'll be like, yeah, he uh, he was in the Pit Raiders at one point. <laughs> He was collecting ingots. Um, yeah, because I mean, he has uh, he has a because um, it's in Pennsylvania. Duh. Um, he ha yeah, he has a uh, a freaking railway rifle as his left ooh. arm. Yeah, so I feel like oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that was clearly a post bot drop day. Oh I'm yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was okay. like everyone lo everyone loves stud because. And then, like, it fit with the whole theme of yeah, steel, perfect. and yeah. it's like, oh yeah, stud steel. Oh yeah, we love you, man. I love it. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to see more of this guy. I once seen someone eat a baby. Continue. Can we talk about, we talk about the? No, no, no. I got to talk about the. Now you brought it up, <laughs> so now I need to info dump about the baby. The eat the baby thing, um, was mod. It's never. It was never in the base game. <laughs> Um, and it is a collective Mandela effect with the Fallout community where everybody really? thinks, yeah, everybody thinks the Eat the I Baby thought everyone knew it was a mod. Game. I knew it was a mod. People, anytime I talk about it, which I don't as much now because TikTok and everything, they don't want you to post stuff about eating a baby, obviously. But obviously. the original na name of the mod was, and now it's changed because it got taken down and reposted by somebody else. It was called A Modest Proposal, <laughs> which I don't know if, if you've ever read that. Um, that piece um i need to google who it is no about. no i've not um okay <laughs> uh, it, it is an essay by uh jonathan swift and it was in the uh in 1729 and he <laughs> distributed it it was during a famine and the <laughs> modest proposal i know was, where it's going <laughs> was for people with too many children or who had kids to eat the, it was satirical obviously <laughs> um it was for them to eat their kid and that's what the mod named it after. And as a nerd, I was like, that's hilarious. That's you know? pretty funny, though. That's um, pretty funny. Yeah. So um, it was for people, children of people who were poor to eat their their baby. <laughs> um, so that is the history of that mod, in case you were wondering. I just info dumped it on you. But um, it you. got reposted under a new name because it the Nexus was like, no, <laughs> we're not this doing this mod. This is messed up. Um, but it is one of my it is the only Mandela effect around the Fallout community that I know of. And I think it's that's funny. funny. Yeah. So. Well, dang. OK. No, I, I like that. That Well, that was a nice little tidbit of knowledge because I did not know that. I didn't. I was like, because I never played with the mod. I just I knew about it. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Oh, I've, I've played with it. I don't think I've ever 
done it, but I, mm. I got, I've grabbed the screenshot, you know? <laughs> You're like, I, need, I got the screenshot. We're good. Yeah. I even made a little Fallout baby, like, art. It's on my Red Bull, if you want to buy it, that just says, eat me. And it's the baby, <laughs> like, the Hulk boy baby. <laughs> um, That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 okay. So, I think we've established that Stead will be fr- from the pit. And he just like yeah. after everything went down, he somehow made it out of there. <laughs> For real. Um, I really like it. I'm excited. So definitely check that out on Mondays. Uh it sounds like 9 p.m. Pacific, uh yeah. or 6 or, p.m. Eastern. Same same thing. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. And that is part of your mayhem, correct? Yes. Yeah, yes. So, like, so yeah. I'll be I'll be streaming a little bit before that, and then we'll move over there right so that's what we'll do cool that make, gives you like one less day where you have it's just you on the whole time too yeah right? yeah i oh, know that's why i'm like hey nikki i want to pull you on some for some more <laughs> so down. just Let's let me it. know <laughs> um See? i think i i think that's all we had for this week's episode i had a lot yeah. of fun this was a very cathartic episode i think yeah we got we got to we got to talk about you know fallout i face my fears talk about redfall a little bit <laughs> it was good. I honestly I needed it. A little micro therapy. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm interested to hear what everyone else thinks. Finally, um, respectfully. And then we ended on talking about stud, which yes. I'm super excited to play as and hope everyone else uh enjoyed tonight's episode. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting yeah. into the swing of things, guys. It's all good. Nikki does all the editing. Yeah. Remember that. She works hard. Thank you. I appreciate it. And she works way, way harder on the Capcast than I do. And I, you know what? I'm grateful for you, Nikki. Thank you. I really am grateful for you because that's hard work. I know it is. That's why we, we try to, we try to keep things concise as much as we can. So not as much editing. That's the secret. Yeah. It is. <laughs> but you guys, um, check us out on all our social, me- social medias. Engage with us. It'll be in the description of this video and in the you'll be able to find it. Don't worry. It lights a fire. Every every time you interact with us is our Charizard tail growing a little bit brighter and a little <sighs> bit stronger. Oh no. <gasps> no. You killed um, us. The opposite <laughs> of what just happened there. Um, but yeah, that's been this this week's episode of the Capcast. Um I I am Nikki. I don't know if we introduced ourselves. I don't know we Nikki. did. I'm Nywa. <laughs> Whatever. You, you're here. You're, you're here now. You you're here now. <laughs> and if you're here, you're family. Um so Olive Garden? Yeah. Hmm. I don't like Olive Garden. I'm Italian. Sorry, we're not gonna go on a tangent right at the end. But um Don't, don't feed the, the agua. That's all. That is all. <laughs>